In this lesson, we're going to be writing equations in slope-intercept form, and we're going to be using linear equations to solve real-life problems. So I'm going to scroll down here for the first example. Write an equation of each line with a given slope and y-intercept. Well, if we see slope and y-intercept, this should really remind us of slope-intercept form. If you remember, slope-intercept form is in y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Well, in this case, I'm given the slope and the y-intercept, so all I need to do is just plug in these values. I ask my students all the time, what do we do with our Chromebooks at night? We plug them in. So we're going to plug in our uh, slope for m and then our y-intercept for b. So our equation is going to be y equals negative 3x plus 1 half. So now we're done with this one. For the second one, I'm going to do the same thing. My slope is 0. My y-intercept is negative 2. So when I plug in 0 times x and then minus 2, well, 0 times x is just 0. So this whole term drops out. So I'm just going to get y equals negative 2. All right. And now we're done with this one. Write an equation of each line in slope-intercept form. When we talked about slope-intercept form in the last example, y equals mx plus b, so all I need to find is the slope and the y-intercept. Well, I can find the slope by doing rise over run on my graph. Okay, So right here, I just need to figure out how many vertical units I need to go and then how many horizontal units I need to go. So I'm going to count them out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I went up. Six units. So my change in y my is going to be six, because we went six up. Six up is positive six. And then over here, one, two, three, four. That's over four. Positive four because I went to the right. Um, if I went to the left, it'd be negative. If I went down, it'd be negative. So anyway, I get six over four, but I need to simplify this for my slope. So that's going to be three over two. Uh, it's always good to leave it as an improper fraction when we're dealing with slope, okay? Um, it just, it's more helpful that way. Anyway, I found my slope, and then if I zoom in on this graph, I see that I already know my y-intercept. The y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. Well, x equals 0 right here at the y-axis point, so the corresponding y-value is negative 3. So I know my y-value is negative 3. So down here, I'm going to write m, because I know m, m is the same thing as change in y over change in x, by the way. It's, they're all slope. m is 3 over 2. And then my y-intercept, which I just saw, is negative 3. So it's b equals negative 3. Now I'll write this in slope-intercept form. y equals 3 halves x minus 3. And now we're done with this one. I have my equation in slope-intercept form. For part b, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find my slope. And then I'm going to locate my y-intercept. So... I see that I have a point here and then a point here. So to find my slope, I'm going to do my rise over run. And I'm going to go down one, two, three units. Okay, well, down three in math, that's negative. So my delta y over delta x, well, my delta y is negative three. And then over, I need to go right one, two, three, four units. So negative three fourths is going to be my slope. So m equals negative three over four. And now I want to locate my y-intercept. Well, my y-intercept is going to be 2 because right here, this point on the y-axis is the y-intercept. Okay, so remember the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. x is 0 here, so the y-value is 2. So b equals 2. So anyway, now I'm going to write my equation, which is y equals my slope, negative 3 fourths times x, and then plus b, that's plus 2. And now we're done with this example. Write an equation of each line that passes through the given points. So for part A, I have the point negative 3, comma, 5, and then I have the point 0, comma, negative 1. So first thing I'm going to do is find the slope. Okay? If I have two points, I can find the slope. I know slope is the change in y over the change in x. And change really just means subtraction, okay? So the change in y is really just the y component of one point minus the y component of the other point. So that's going to be my y2 minus y1 
over, and then x2 minus x1, the x component of one point minus the x component of the other point. Anyway, uh, you might remember this formula. Even if you didn't, that's okay. So all I'm going to do here is just take my negative 1 minus 5 and put that over 0 minus negative 3. So it's going to be negative 1 minus 5 over 0 minus negative 3. This is going to simplify to negative 6 over, this becomes a positive 3, and negative 6 over positive 3 is negative 2, so my slope, m, is negative 2. Remember, m is the same thing as delta y over delta x. Anyway, now that I've found my slope, I want to figure out what my y-intercept is. Well, if you look at this point right here, my y-intercept is given to me. I don't even need to find any y-intercept. So my y-intercept is given to me right here, and it's 0, comma, negative 1. The x value is 0, and the definition of the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. So my y-intercept is negative 1. So now I'm just going to write my equation, y equals negative 2x minus 1, and we're done with part A. For part B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do my y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If I call this point 2 and call this point 1, I'll do negative 5 minus negative 5 over 8 minus 0. Well, these turn to a positive, so I get negative 5 plus 5, which is 0, over 8. Well, 0 divided by 8, I oftentimes tell my classes, if you're dividing 0 by anything, just think of Mr. G's friends. Mr. G has 0 friends, divides them into 8 groups. How many friends are in each group? That's going to be 0. Obviously, I'm just kidding, but that seems to help to remember. So my slope is 0, so I put m equals 0. And then once again, I see that I have the point 0, negative 5, my x value is 0, so my y-intercept is given to me. So b is equal to negative 5. So for my equation, I could write y equals 0x minus 5, but if you know the slope's going to be 0, and we see that our y values are the same, I know this is going to be a horizontal line at y equals negative 5. So you don't even need this step. You can if it helps you but you can jump right to this step. y equals negative 5 is the equation of our line in slope-intercept form. And now we're done with this one. Write a linear function f with the values f of 0 equals 10 and f of 6 equals 34. Well, we're in function notation right now, but that's fine. I know in function notation, the inputs are going to be inside the parentheses, and the outputs are going to be what the entire function is equal to in this case. So this right here, f of 0 equals 10, this corresponds to the ordered pair 0, comma 10. My input is 0, my output is 10. And then this one right here, f of 6 equals 34, that corresponds to the point 6, comma 34. So I can do my same exact y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 here. So I'll just start here. I'll do 10 minus 34 over 0 minus 6 to find my slope, which is m. So now I get negative 24 over negative 6, and this simplifies to 4. So my slope's 4. And if you look back at this point, or this point, either way, it's the same thing, my x is 0, so my y-intercept's going to be 10 here. Remember, the y-intercept is the value of y when x is 0. So I know that b is going to equal 10. And this time I want to write a linear function f, so I'm going to write my, uh, my equation in function notation. So that's going to be f of x equals, and then I'll just do my slope-intercept form. So I'll do my slope, 4 times x, and then plus 10, plus the y-intercept. So now I have properly written this linear function uh, that contains these two input-output pairs. And now we're done with this one. Solving real-life problems. A linear model is a linear function that models a real-life situation. When a quantity y changes at a constant rate with respect to a quantity x, you can use the equation y equals mx plus b to model the relationship. The value of m is the constant rate of change, which is the slope, and the value of b is the initial or starting value of y, which is the y-intercept. So now we're going to use that and try to do this example. Excluding hydropower, U.S. power plants used renewable energy sources to generate 105 million megawatt hours of electricity in 2007. 
By 2012, the amount of electricity generated had increased to 219 million megawatt hours. Write a linear model that represents the number of megawatt hours generated by non-hydropower renewable energy sources as a function of the number of years since 2007. Use the model to predict the number of megawatt hours that will be generated in 2017. So there's a lot of information in this, but let's just start with what we know. Okay? We know that in 2007, oh, I will underline this, 2007, we produced, whoops, 105 million megawatt hours of electricity. Okay? And then in 2012, that number is now 219 million megawatt hours. Okay? Well, we want our linear model to be at years since 2007. Okay? Well, the year 2007, since 2007, there's been zero years. Okay? So I can write a corresponding ordered pair, zero, comma, and then we're dealing with 105 million megawatt hours. I'm just going to keep this as 105, and then have my unit be millions of megawatt hours. Okay? So this represents my 2007. Okay? Zero years since 2007, and 105 million megawatt hours. Okay? Well, the 2012 situation here is five years after 2007. So my input value is going to be five, and then my output value is going to be the 219 million megawatt hours. Okay? So now I have my two ordered pairs that I can write a linear model with. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my slope using the same method that we have been all during this video. So that's going to be my change in y over change in x equals, well, I'll start right here. Call this point 2, call this point 1. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it's going to be 219 minus 105 over 5 minus 0. So I can do 219 minus 105. And that's going to give me 4, a 1, and a 1. So that's 114. And this is going to be all over 5 minus 0, which is 5. So my slope m is going to be equal to 114 over 5. Now my y-intercept, well, I've already found it because I have my 0 input, and the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. So 105 is going to be my value of b. So for my, so for my linear model, I'm just going to plug my m and my b into my slope-intercept form equation, y equals mx plus b. So it's going to be y equals 114 over 5 x plus 105. Okay, so that's the first part that it asks us. The second part that it asks us is to use the model that we come up with to predict how many megawatt hours will be generated in 2017. Well, 2017 is 10 years after 2007, so my input is going to be 10. So my x value is my input, that's going to be 10 years. So I'm just going to plug this in to my linear model, and I get y equals 114 over 5 times 10 plus 105. Okay. Well, I can cross-cancel this. This becomes a 1, this becomes a 2, and 2 times 114 is going to be 228 plus 105. I can add this up. I need a 3, a 1, a 3, and a 3. Okay. So my y value when x equals 10 is 333. Now in the context of the problem, what this 333 means is I'm going to be generating 333 megawatt hours in the year 2017, okay? So I'm just going to write that out real quick. In 2017, we will produce 333 